Woo, Jen's on. Um, all right, so uh, this is my dragon robot, and he is a recycle bot. So he's actually made out of recycled materials, like these cardboard boxes. And he's a pretty, a pretty advanced robot for someone to build. It actually um, uses one of every type of output at least, and sometimes it uses even more than one of each type of output that's included in the kit. Um, so I guess I will show you what I have in program to do. Okay, so it's a dinosaur and he kind of just kind of sits here and wags his tail and waits for like an unsuspecting victim to come along. And then it has uh, sensors so that regardless of what side um, um, um. I approach him from, he'll actually kind of turn and bite at me. Roar, 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 roar. Um. Yum, 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 yum. And if you look, he can actually, like, he'll try to, like, bite at the laptop, too, if I put the laptop too close. So, I kind of have to keep a safe distance. And so, most of the materials that the main body is built out of are actually recycled cardboard boxes that um, the kit comes in. So, if you look, like, this big box is his body and the medium box is his neck. And then the top two smaller boxes make up his head and jaw. And then he has some you know, foam decorations on him to make him look more like a dragon. Uh, so it has first two servo motors in it. It has one servo motor that causes the jaw to open and close, like this. Um, and then it has a servo motor down in the neck that allows the neck to turn left and right so he is able to look at you know, whoever's coming up and approaching him. He has two tricolor LEDs in his eyes, so he has one in each, so that both eyes can be blue or red or purple, or they can even be different colors, uh, which is a lot of fun to work with. The wires from the LEDs, the tricolor LEDs in his eyes, actually string through the top of his head and come down and meet the wire that's coming off of the servo in his jaw, and then that makes this little bundle of wires on the side here. Up in the top of his mouth, mounted on the top of this servo, is an LED. Uh, a single color LED that's yellow that lights up this feather that's representing his dragon's fire. Continuous rotation motor located in his tail. And it's very hard to see from this angle because it's kind of covered up by this mechanism that allows his tail to wag. But if I open him up here, you can actually see where all the wires are hidden and where I've put the hummingbird. And so right here, this white box is the continuous rotation motor that causes the tail to wag. And it's actually mounted from the inside. And then the little motor horn pops out the other side and connects to the disc that runs the tail motion. Uh, let's see. He also has uh, three distance sensors, uh, one on each side and one on the front. And those distance sensors are what allows him to sense where my hand is and is able to then look where my hand is located um, and then bite at me. And he knows how close I am when my hands are there. And that's actually not part of the standard hummingbird kit. Um, I took these from different robots that weren't using the uh, distance sensor. And so I was able to have extra distance sensors for my robot, but you can also buy these online separately. Like I said, he uses all of the outputs for the robot, and I didn't use this in his program, but he actually has uh, vibration motors located on his wings, kind of under this little bubble of hot glue, which causes his wings to, you know, vibrate a little bit and kind of look like he's pathetically trying to fly off, but, you know, it doesn't quite work for him. Those are all my outputs and inputs on my robot. Unlike the horse that is a very simple robot, this is a rather complex robot for someone to build, and I'd say it took me about six hours to build him.